Hey everybody, thank you for joining us on part 10 of our series on transferring data from Access to Excel. In this video we're discussing graphing again. In the previous video, part 9, we discussed using an existing spreadsheet that already had a graph that had been manually set up in it. And we used Access to pop it the data range for that graph, forcing the graph to, re to readjust itself to the new data. In this video we're going to discuss doing everything from VBA. So we'll create a spreadsheet from scratch using VBA and we'll create the, the entire graph from VBA and access. So let's take a look quickly at the, at the chart and spreadsheet that we want to create. This is the chart and spreadsheet we had from yesterday. We had a static uh, title up here and a dynamic title here. We had a data grid underneath. Okay, so uh, this division is our x-axis. These are like sales divisions or business divisions. And then our series one was gross sales and series two was gross margin. The only difference I want to make between this spreadsheet and the spreadsheet we're going to make today is I'm going to move these titles into the chart area. And that's just to do to show a little bit of variety and do something a little bit different for you. Let's head over to our code window. I have a ton of code already set up. All this code is setting up all this spreadsheet except the chart. So we're we're creating a creating spreadsheet and creating this uh, data grid and all the pretty lines and whatnot. I'm going to start with creating a, a dimensioning an object, an Excel chart object, we're calling it Excel chart. So we're going to head on down here underneath all of the, the formatting for our, data, our new data range. And we're going to create the chart. We're going to set that Excel chart object equal to chart objects using the add method. Now this takes the add method takes four parameters. You have to tell it where you want the chart and how big you want the chart to be. And it takes as parameters uh, numbers that are in points. So remember, you have approximately 72 points per inch. So you might have to do a little bit of working out here um, using some, some math, or maybe some uh, playing a game of high-low to get it where you want it. But we're going to start off with uh, a left position of 50, a top position of 20, a width of 338, and a height of 273, again, in points. Now I'm going to, I will post a link to the, the code in the description down below, and in that I'll put a, I'll put a, a comment that has uh, those two points in it, that kind of left top width and height, and then the 72 points per inch, just as a reminder. Now I want to set up some width statements here so we can reduce, so we can reduce the amount of typing that we're gonna do. And the first one will be a width statement for our, our Excel chart object. Go ahead and type in our end width right there, and I'm going to mark it so I know which end width this is. Okay, the first thing I want to do in here is give us the rounded corners that we had in our example. Use the rounded corners property, and you set that equal to true. I'm going to go with another width statement here. And within the chart object, we're going to work with the chart itself. And again, set up our end width mark it so we know which one that is and in here we need to tell it what type of chart we have use a chart type property and we get help here from IntelliSense the type of chart we chose is an Excel column cluster right next I'm going to set that chart title in order to set the text for the chart title property, we have to first tell it that we have a title. So you set the has title property to true. If you do not do this, even if you set up this next statement, the chart title dot text, you will not see it. Okay, so you have to you have to have has, has title equal to true if you want to actually see your title. I'm going to give us a two line title this time. Um, so we're using chart title text the first line is going to be your static text, gross sales and gross margin. I'm going to follow up the VBCR constant to give us, put us down on the next line. And then I have a variable for quarter that holds a quarter, and a hard coded word space, quarter space, and then a variable that holds our year. And those are variables that we pulled from our record set, from the first row of a record set, and uh, set that in the code above. Again, that'll be in the code listing that you can look at if you uh, care to go. Uh, look at it later. Next we're going to deal with the, the legend. And just like the chart title, we have to tell the graph that it has a legend. 
Otherwise, you will not see it again. So has legend equals true. And then we set the legend position equal to, and it gives us a constant list again. And I'm going to use Excel legend position bottom. That centers the legend beneath the x axis. And next, I'm going to give it, I'm going to work with the chart title. Set up another width because we have three items we want to work with in here. And again, we're reducing our typing. So we're going to go width on chart title font. First, we're going to tell it which font we want using the name property, and it takes a string. We give it, I want it to be bold, so we'll use font style. We give it a, sprint, a string that says bold, not bond, bold. And the size, it be, and this takes, it just takes points, so we get 14 points. The only other thing left to do is to actually tell the graph where its data lives. What data do we want it to graph or to represent? Now, I'm going to show us two methods today. First one I think is very easy. It's called set source data. I'll just copy it in here. Set source data takes as its parameter, the source, a range. And we're going to give it this entire block, okay, including the column headings. And when you give it an entire block like this, it figures out which one is the X and it figures out which ones are the Y's. These are the two Y series. And if you give it your column headings, it will automatically set your legend for you. So you gross margin there, gross sales there. So we're going to give it C22 down to E, and then we don't know how many lines of data we wrote. <clears throat> so we have to look at our integer, the I, that was set up to keep track of which row we were writing to on the spreadsheet. In this case, um, I, after we finished working with our record set, was pointing to the row below our last row of data. So our bottom right hand corner is E I minus 1. So we're going to save this, head over to our form. Actually, let me close this spreadsheet first. And then head over to our form and produce the spreadsheet. And there we go. So we get our two lines and our title second quarter space 2015. We've already the, the set source data figured out which was our X, which was our Y. It gave us the, the two data series. We're perfect so far. So let's close our spreadsheet and back to the code window. I'm going to comment out the set source data and I want to use a second method to to select the source for the chart. This method we will work with the series collection, which is a collection. So dot series collection, and we give it the, the method dot new series. So this says this sets up a new series for us, a new data series. Okay? We're gonna have two we have two data series in this chart. We have right, we have a gross sales and gross margin. So we're working with the first one now. This is this is because it's a collection, we have to index it. Okay, so series collection one. Let me give it a name. And it takes a range for a name, and that is the uh, the column heading over our our first data series D22. And in D22, we happen to know that that is the word gross sales. That's our column heading. I'm going to copy in the rest of these um, these two statements. Then we have to set up the x values and the y values for this range. Okay, so series collection one dot values. This is the y value. Okay, column D is our y value for series 1. So we give it d23 as our first row of data and d i minus 1 as our last row of data. And series collection 1 dot x values, that's the, the horizontal, or the x-axis, okay? And in our example, column C had our x-axis. So let's stop there, produce our graph, and you can see here that we have one data series, gross sales. And there's our legend using the label or the name gross sales. Close that down. I'm going to copy in the second series, not make you watch me type it. There we go. So again, we go series collection dot new series to set up a second series. And because this is a collection when it's indexed, this one is number two. And the name is E22, which holds the word gross margin. 
and then the, uh, the y values are in column E. The x values are the same x values that we have for series one. All right. And the last thing I want to do is set the, I want to put a label underneath the x-axis to point out that those are divisions, company divisions. And we do that using the axis, axes collection. And this takes, when we do this, we have to tell it which axis we want to work with. Okay. Uh, we can give it, it has a couple constants you can, you can give it here. If you give it XL value, that means you want to work with the Y axis. If you give it XL category, that tells you you want to work with the X axis. And again, we have to tell it as title equals true. And then we'll do, I'm just going to copy that. Axis. And this one, instead of text, it is a caption, which is interesting to me. But to be capitalized, didn't it? There we go. And that should do it. Save it, produce it, and there we go. So we have our second data set, our data, second data series, gross margin. And we see it showed up in our legend automatically for us. And there is that x axis label that we just created. End. So that is it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and as usual I'll post a link in the description down below to the, the code listing, the entire code listing. I uh, hope you got something out of this video. In the next video I plan to discuss a few more, uh, uh, a few more advanced options on graphing. Thank you.